Hey, welcome back to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today, we're going to talk about the lessons we learned during our first camping trip in the Camp Easy Teardrop. Hey, welcome back everyone. If this is your first time here, it's good to have you aboard. And if you're a repeat watcher, welcome back to the channel. Um, as many of you know, we just got through building the Camp Easy 5945 teardrop from our own design. And about a week and a half ago, uh, we took it on our first ever camping trip to the Big South Fork National River and Recreation Area. My wife and I had just a wonderful time. There was nothing like camping in a camper that I built with my own two hands. I can't even describe how wonderful that was. But we did learn some things about the Camp Easy, some things that we really liked, and we learned about some things that we need to change, um, things that we wouldn't necessarily know just looking at it in the workshop. Um, there's no teacher like experience. So I want to talk about what some of those are today. Now, as a little bit of a disclaimer, I am going to show you some products that I've picked up that I bought with my own money uh, since the last episode. And I'm going to show you some links in the description below where you can pick those up on Amazon. Now, I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you choose to, to pick those products up yourself through those links, I'll get a small commission at no extra cost to you. So, hey, enough of that. Let's get started. So the Camp Easy has a fairly large galley, um, has a five foot wide countertop. So there's quite a bit of space on there, except for the little uh, circle cut out for the sink. But I would still like to have had more places to set items. Uh, this is a side table that actually I cut out, put some urethane on, some spar urethane, and I put a little bracket on the back that will clip onto the side of the camper. But I didn't have it finished in time to take it on the first camping trip. What I need to do is to put a little uh, L brace or corner brace on there with a hinge. Um, that way it'll, you know, keep it upright when it's on the side of the camper. Oh my goodness, this would have been super helpful uh, having extra space to put things. So I know this isn't going to sound like too big of a deal, but we really struggled with what to do with our dish towel. Um, I didn't have any kind of a towel rack on the galley, and when we would wash our hands and dry them on the towel, we'd just have to lay it on the countertop. And then later we were drying off dishes and laying the dishes on the towel, so then it tied up our towel. We couldn't wash our hands. Um, I know that sounds silly, but hey, we picked up a towel rack that's made to go over uh, a cabinet door, like a three quarter inch thick cabinet door. Um, I ended up not hanging it over the cabinet door. I cut the top of it off on my bandsaw and I drilled a couple holes in it just to screw it um, into the door. It would have worked well either way, but I just wanted something that wasn't gonna move around. Um, but anyway, we put that on there and you know, I'll have that side table for the next camping trip. And then I bought a collapsible tub that we can put on that side table to put our dirty dishes. I think that tub and the towel rack is really gonna make galley work a lot easier. So here's the collapsible tub. <clears throat> when it's fully open, it's probably, I don't know, five, six inches deep. It's a pretty good sized tub, plenty big enough to put my pots, pans, my dishes in. And when it comes time to put it up, it collapses down to about two inches thick and it goes easily into one of my cabinets. I can put it in the back and still put my little storage bin in front of it. So let's talk about the bed. We really, really like our bed setup, most of it. Um, we used a Coleman brand, eight inch thick, queen size um, blow up air mattress that we just put on the floor. And then we put a, about a three or four inch memory foam uh, topper mattress over top of that. It was like super comfortable. It actually felt as good as the mattress that we have uh, in the house. I loved it. The only bad thing is that when we try to set up, all of your weight goes on your butt. And obviously I got a lot of weight. Um, and, and the mattress will sink down just enough that it makes it hard to set up. You're kind of fighting setting up. And so I don't like that. But it does remind me that we go camping to be outside, not inside the camper. Um, the inside of the camper is for when we're you know, about ready to go to bed. Maybe we want to read a little bit or just turn off the lights and go to sleep. So it's a different kind of camping than my large travel trailer. But hey, that bed is super comfortable. We love it. Oh, oh yeah, that brings me to my next point. Where we are outside so much, 
Um, we brought some bug spray repellent, <laughs> but we found out that was not enough. I don't know what kind of bugs are in season right now at the Big South Fork, um, but there were quite a few of them. So I don't know, we, maybe we need to pick up some citronella candles or, or do something else. If, a matter of fact, if you have any suggestions, leave those in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And maybe we'll mention that on an upcoming uh, episode. So, hey, I want to give a quick plug to the DIY Teardrop Campers community. It's a Facebook group. It's free to join. Um, the guy that runs it's a super good guy named Jay Poor. I hope I got his uh, name <laughs> pronounced right there. If I didn't, let me know, Jay. Um, but anyway, he's a real good guy. A lot, of, a lot of fantastic builders hanging out on there. A lot of knowledge to share. So if you're building your own teardrop, check this group out. Again, it's the DIY Teardrop Campers community. So those of you who have watched my videos before um, probably know that I usually have a hat on. Well, the other night when we went to the campground, I, called, I crawled in the camper and I realized I didn't have anywhere to put my hat, but now I do. I installed some medium black command hooks, uh, so now I have a place always to hang my hat. Hey, while we're in the camper, check out these cool curtains that my wife made. And there's another tip on these. Uh, in instead of using a curtain rod, she just installed the curtains on the back, on the top, with Velcro. So the top of the curtains just Velcro on. If we ever need to take them off and wash them, we can do so. She made some Velcro tie backs for them, and I think they look super good. It also matches my little black bear pillow I have in the middle. Okay, now we need to get serious. One of the most important things on any camping trip, how are you gonna make your coffee? That's a big deal. I ended up finding this little five cup aluminum percolator at a yard sale um, a couple, three years ago. This made some of the best coffee I've had in a long time. I buy whole bean coffee, and I, uh, so I ground it myself, and I ground it on the most coarse setting that my grinder had. Um, and by doing so, I didn't really get any, um, any grinds or, or any sediment in the bottom of my coffee cup. I was just real tickled with that. This thing made some of the best coffee ever, so if you have an opportunity to pick one of these things up, I would certainly recommend that you do so. So those of you that have watched the channel before probably remember that I have a USB charger right here, and I have a 12 volt outlet here that are both switched on and off with this little switch. Well, I ended up buying this little voltmeter that just plugs into the receptacle. Right now I'm plugged into shore power, so it says I'm running 13 and a half, 13.6 volts. Uh, those are charge bolts. Um, you know, instead of just wiring one of those in the system and you know taking all that time, I could just pull this out and stick it in a drawer, and could even use it in the uh, cigarette lighter of my truck. So how much easier can you get than that? So we realized in the morning when you're trying to fix your hair or my wife's putting on makeup, you didn't have a mirror. So I bought this little locker mirror. It's a five inch by seven inch mirror that I put on the inside of one of the galley doors. Um, this one I mounted sideways instead of vertical. That way I could put it towards the top of the door. That way if when I close the door, uh, if I've got canned goods in here in the cabinet, it won't hit the mirror. Now this mirror is acrylic and not glass, so it is more durable. Um, it came with a self-adhesive magnetic back, which I did not use. I just put a couple strips of Velcro, one across the top and bottom. Uh, that way if we want to pull it off and hold it in our hand, we can. But I think this is going to be real handy. So this next tip is going to be what I call the $1 tip. Um, we find that we drink a lot of water when we're on a camping trip. Um, I need water to make coffee with. She needs water if she's going to make tea or some kind of fruit drinks. Um, we brush her teeth with it, take medicine with it. We just do all kinds of stuff with water. We just buy distilled water in a jug. Um, you can buy it at the grocery store, Dollar General store down the road. Cost about a dollar. You can't beat the price. Now, it was kind of funny the other night though, we had the jug sitting on the counter and every time we did anything, we had to move the jug around and it was getting in our way. We couldn't even open the cabinet door without hitting it. Um, when we got home, we were talking about how handy having distilled water was, but how much it was also in the way. And we looked at each other and we said, why didn't we set it on the ground when we weren't using it? It's a jug, it's gonna be okay. So next time we're still gonna bring the gallon jug, but we're gonna store it under the camper on the ground. So I didn't necessarily build um, what I would call an off-road camper, and it's really not jacked up. 
but it is a little tall. It's got some ground clearance and I do have short legs. And we found that trying to get in and out of the camper was a little bit of a chore. So when we got home, the first thing that I bought um, was a couple folding stools. These uh, stools are super lightweight. They fold flat. I can put them in the tongue box so they're out of the way. Um, and these are a kind of a medium height. Um, they made some, I think the same company that made these made one that was a little shorter and one that was a little taller. These are going to work out just fine. Um, these are a heavy duty stool. I think they'll hold up to 330 pounds. Now I'm not going to tell you how much I weigh, but they do hold me just fine. So I think this is going to make getting in and out of the camper a whole lot easier. So let's talk about stabilizer jacks. Um, I've had three full-size travel trailers, which all have some sort of, I'm gonna call it a crank down jack. I usually do it with a cordless drill. Um, and when those touch the ground, you can actually raise the camper up probably a couple inches on each side to help level it out. I know they're just called a stabilizer jack and I certainly wouldn't jack the camper all the way up with it, but you can put a little pressure and ease up one side more than the other. On the teardrop, however, um, I bought uh, some jacks that you see a lot on pop-up campers that basically just, just swing down and go down and touch the ground. Now, using the tongue jack, um, I did raise the camper and lower a little bit, and I was trying to put some pressure on those. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And I found that if I tried to put a little pressure on them, they just released. Um, so those really are just a stabilizer jack, uh, the ones I have anyway. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is something that I learned. So from now on, I really need to try to get the camper level uh, before I use those jacks and purely just use those jacks to stabilize the camper with. Now, one thing we did encounter on the trip that I still don't have a solution for, and I'd really like for you to help me, uh, put in the comment section below a good solution for what do you do with your campground trash when you're camping in a teardrop. Um, I have a large travel trailer that I have a dedicated trash bin in. Um, and once it's full, I can take it out to the campground bin. It works out pretty well. But in a teardrop, I certainly don't want to put a bag of trash in the cabin area where I'm going to sleep. Um, and it takes up too much room in the galley. So the, the teardroppers out there that are watching this video, what have you done and what do you do with the trash that you have bagged up when you're teardrop camping? Put that in the comments below so we all can learn from that. So there you have it, the things that we found worked well for us and the things that we needed to improve on after our first camping experience in a teardrop camper. Now I will say that we absolutely loved it. The camper had more room inside than what I expected. It's a queen size bed and we have a king size bed at the house, um, but it had super, super amounts of room and we don't have an air conditioner, we just have the Max Air Max fan. It kept us really cool all night. Matter of fact, we had to get up in the middle of the night and shut the thing down because we were about to freeze to death. So, I, you know, unless it gets just crazy hot here in the southeast, I don't think it's going to be a, a problem not having an air conditioner. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll let you know. I'll give you an update on that if I find out that I am wrong. Um, but those are some things that worked well and things that we need to improve on. Hopefully they'll help you in your own travels. And um, hey, I appreciate you watching this episode. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.